Just how did Apple take their logo from looking like this to something like this? Well, I think I figured out the answer and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it just using After Effects. In this video, I'll cover all the techniques that you need to know to create super smooth liquid looking gradients just like this. In After Effects, the first thing we're going to need to do is create our gradient. So let's go ahead and create a comp named gradient. And I'm going to keep this square. So I'm doing my 1920 by 1920. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new rectangle by double clicking the rectangle tool to make that the same size and shape of my comp. And I'm just going to rename this to be gradient. Because if you don't know by now, we always nail our layers. And we're then going to go up to the fill up here. And I'm going to hold Alt and I'm going to click to change it to a gradient. Now we'll get given these two buttons here. And I'm just going to drag these bottom and the top of my composition. And that's just changing the start and end point of our gradient fill. What we want is a white to black gradient, and that's absolutely perfect. Now to this layer, we're going to add the color colorama effect. And this plugin that's popped up here is Video Copilot's FX Console, and it is completely free. It just allows you to search for effects much faster. And what the colorama is going to do is map our gradient colors to a completely new one. But don't worry, because it doesn't need to be this rainbow, we can actually change it in the output cycle. So we do have a bunch of built-in presets, or we can make our own. So maybe we'll start with one, and I will start with the hue cycle that we were left with. And I actually want to delete a few colors. So I can just select the green that I don't want and drag this out of the cycle. I can then do that with a pink as well and get rid of that one. And maybe I'll just leave four colors in for now. Now to add a color, if you want to want add one back in, you can just click anywhere in this cycle and choose your color. The color window will come up and you just click OK and it'll add that new color into your gradient. And once you're happy with your chosen colors, I've gone for these kind of sunsetty ones similar to the original. You can actually drag them around your circle and choose how they're interpolated. So I might just smooth this out a little bit and maybe end on the black instead and have that dark patch. Then we can bring some of these around and just change how it cycles through. Now, at the moment, this looks OK, but I want to make this look much nicer. So the first thing I want to do is add a turbulent displace to this. And the one I went with was turbulent smoother. We do have all these different options that will displace our layer differently. And I'm going to stick with the turbulent smoother. And then we want to increase the amount and you can see it's getting way more intense. And then we can increase the size as well. But if we go too far, it begins to break the displacement. So we need to keep that in mind. And I want something that looks quite nice, gives us a few kind of knotting effects, and maybe not too far. So somewhere around there. Now, the problem is this doesn't actually animate at the minute, but it's really easy to do. We can go into the input phase in our colorama and open up this menu. And in the phase shift, I can write an expression. So I'm going to hold Alt and click. And I'm going to type in time times 45. And that means that every second of time in our timeline, this is going to shift 45 degrees. And by eight seconds, it'll have done a full rotation. So if I trim my work comp, it'll be a seamless loop every eight seconds. And there's a really fast way to work out how many degrees you need per second. You can simply do time times 360 and then divide it by the number of seconds that you're wanting it to run across. So if I do eight, you'll see it outputs to 45 degrees a second. Now, if you're feeling a little lost and understanding expressions, it's probably the perfect time to introduce my Motion Essentials course. I'll take you through everything that you need to know from the complete basics of After Effects to being fully confident and comfortable with taking on your own projects. And I've structured this into easy to follow lessons that not only teach you the how, but also the why, so that you can feel confident in your own abilities. Now, if you get stuck anywhere along the way, you don't need to worry because you'll have access to me through the private community where I can help you directly with any problems that you may have. Now, if you want to check that out, you can use the link in the description below. But back to the video. Now, to make this gradient even smoother, I'm going to go ahead and add a Gaussian blur effect to this as well. And we're going to crank this up really high. Let's go to about 180. And you can see it just smooths out those lines even more. And we have this really seamless looking gradient. Now, back in our main comp, I'm going to drag in this gradient below my logo layer. And with a track map, I'm going to pick with that to my logo. And now this gradient will run nicely through this logo. But it's not quite where we need it to be, although it is getting there. 
So the first thing I want to do is duplicate my logo layer with Control and D, and I'm just going to rename this to be Displacement. I'm going to turn this layer on and solo it with this button here, and I'm going to change the fill to be a medium gray. Now, how we change the fill of this will affect our displacement. Medium gray is a level, and that's kind of, think of that as your ground plane. Think of that as the ground. And if we make something black, it will displace underneath the ground or dig underneath. And if we make it white, it will sit on top. So I like to make mine mid gray in this example. I'm then gonna right click this layer, go to layer styles and inner glow. I'm gonna open this up, go to my layer styles, inner glow. And some of these settings I've actually saved from last time. Now, what you'll need to change is you'll need to make your blend mode normal instead of screen. And all I did was change my color to white. I'm then going to increase the size of this, and this is going to dictate how much our displacement is going to be. So we can get quite crazy with this and get some really cool effects. Now you'll see just how easy this is to change when we begin to change the colors and, and put everything together. I'm just gonna press U on this layer and turn off the solo, then turn off that layer. Then on our gradient, we want to add an effect called time displacement. And what we need to do is choose our time displacement layer, which is going to be our displacement. And that's going to map the time differently based on our value, which is again, the white to black. So on this gradient layer, I need to change it to effects and masks. And this will slow your computer down quite a bit using this effect. But you can kind of see it's going to start changing how this is manipulated when it loads. Now, not much appears to be happening right now, but if I toggle between the two, we're getting a little something, but not much. So maybe if I change my displacement to be darker, we'll see more of an impact. And you can see now, because we've got a big change between the white and the black value, that it's doing way more on this time displacement. And if I turn that off, you can see how that massively affects our shape. If I now press play, we're gonna have a completely nicer looking effect. And this is something that's really easy to change just by manipulating our inner glow layer or by changing the base layer color from a white to a black. And changing each one will give you a completely different effect. Now to add a bit more to this, I'm going to go to my logo layer and search for the CC glass effect. And you can see we begin to get this little rim around the edge here. I'm going to change the bump map to be our displacement and I'm going to make it effects and masks. And then I'm going to change the property to work off the alpha. So now we have this really cool little edge and the gradient is going around at a different time completely. Now we can play with all of these values in here. I think I left the majority of mine as standard. I might have decreased the softness a little bit, which just kind of changes things that much. Or we can decrease the height a bit as well. And I'm actually going to set my softness to about six and decrease that width of border there. Now I'd also like to soften it out even more. So I'm just going to select my displacement layer and search for a Gaussian blur again. And we can just increase that and you'll see how it begins to soften that border edge. Maybe we can go up to something like 50 and we get a completely different look. But you'll notice that we're now beginning to get some issues with our time displacement and it's looking a bit strange. Now to fix this, we're going to need to slow our computer down even more. On our gradient layer, we'll need to change the time resolution of our time displacement to be 120. And just by doubling it, it's going to smooth everything out. Now, although that has fixed some issues, we're still getting a couple errors. And that's down to my displacement layer. On the Gaussian Blur, I need to turn off repeat edge pixels. And again, when we wait for that to load, it's going to smooth everything out. And this is looking 10 times better. Now, if you don't like the way the gradient moves, you can simply change the maximum displacement time from 1 to minus 1. So after a bit of caching, we're left with this. And now let's finish it off by adding some glows. So I'm just gonna duplicate my gradient layer here and also duplicate my logo layer. And I'm gonna rename that to be glow. And then I'm gonna change my gradient to be track matted to my glow layer. To this glow layer, I'm just gonna add another Gaussian blur and increase the size to about 120, something really big. And I'll just reduce my render preview so it goes a little faster because 
this does get intensive with the time displacement. Now the nice thing about doing our glow this way is the glow will actually animate with the gradient layer that's already there. And because this is a pre-comp, any change to be making here will affect everything overall. And now you're left with this stunning gradient animation and you can do whatever you like with it. Change the shapes how you want, add some extra masks in to add some extra flair, and if you want to learn even more awesome gradient techniques, why not go ahead and watch this video next?